Hey guys, Scheming Off The Grid here. The decade is coming to a close and what an amazing decade for video games. In today's episode, we have assembled a retro gaming dream team to relive some of the best games that moved us in the last 10 years. What are we drinking today? Today we're drinking Bourbon County 2019 by Goose Island. We're kicking off Bourbon County week here at Gaming Off The Grid. All right, you know the drill. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell icon so you never miss an upload. And sit back, relax, pour yourself a beer if you care to, and saddle up, folks. These are the games that moved us in the last decade. All right, here we go. This should be a fun one. Some of the best voices in the retro game community are a part of this episode. This decade, we saw a lot of changes. Almost two full console generations yeah, had their cycle. It's crazy. You know, the Xbox 360, PS3, the Nintendo Wii, and now we have the PS4, the Xbox One, the Nintendo Switch. And it's almost the birth of the next console generation yeah. in 2020. Like, that's nuts. It's very special and unique to have two console generations span over the same decade for the most part. It's been awesome to see the rise of the Switch here towards oh, the back yeah. end of the decade. And also this decade, I really feel like indie games came to fruition. Heck yes. And like old school retro styled new games came out. Yeah. So it's just like, it's a great time to be a gamer. It is, absolutely. Um, and we wanted to do something special to wrap up this decade. So we've assembled an awesome group of retro gamers from the YouTube community to tell you the games that moved them in the last decade. So we are going to give the floor to all these awesome content creators. And then at the back end, we will let you know what our game of the decade is as well. Starting things off, we got Miss Kinzilla. Kinzie, take it away. My pick for top game that moved me is definitely Night in the Woods. If you follow me at all, you know that I have talked about this game at absolute nauseum. But this game is so wonderful. It has incredibly relatable characters. It kind of takes place small town, middle America. It's a story driven platformer, but it does change up the gameplay with like little mini games and that that get you through the story. And it does focus a lot on like your friends moving on or mental health. And it does it in such a beautiful way while telling a really like fun, gripping, almost like mystery story. It's amazing. The music's great, so I own it on vinyl and I own the statues. It's one of those games that really stuck with me after I finished it. In fact, I've beaten it like four or five times because like everyone has their own story to tell and you can kind of focus on one person when you play it through. So you really need to play it more than once to get the full story and the full effect. And it really stuck with me. So 100% game that moved me, Night in the Woods. What's going on gamers? Chris here with Hellsplash Gaming. And when I was asked to pick a game of the last decade that moved me, it was a no-brainer. 2013's The Last of Us is an absolute masterclass in how games should be made. Anchored by the voice acting of Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson, Joel and Ellie's journey is absolutely mind-blowing. The pacing, the plot points, the character arc, the graphics were stunning. It was one that grabbed me from the opening scene and it drug me emotionally through this journey. And it wasn't all peaches and cream. It is a very raw and visceral and very carnal and selfish journey. You're meeting people along the way. You don't know if you can trust them. You might have to end up fighting them. It's really a sad journey, but it's one that everybody needs to experience. It was one of those games where multiple times I kind of thought I knew where it was going, and then the fork in the road went left when I thought it was going right, and it took me on a completely different journey, and I never got bored. It never overdid what it was good at. It just kept growing and growing and growing. At the end of the game, there was this moment with all this carnage and chaos going on where you go into a building and a giraffe walks by, and it was so calm and so peaceful in that moment. And hearing Joel and Ellie talk in these moments of quiet, just almost silence was so unique and it's just something you have to experience. So for me, The Last of Us is the game of the decade and one of my favorite games of all time, hands down. And every gamer deserves to play this game. You owe it to yourself to check out The Last of Us. What's up guys, this is Megadan29 and the biggest game that moved me out of this decade was definitely Cuphead and man I played the heck out of this game and if you guys know my channel and you watch me you know that very much I just play retro that is pretty much all I do 
So for me to come out of my realm and play a new game, it has to look pretty stinking good. So I went and I played that game because first of all, it looked beautiful. They had the drawing type of graphics where they had to draw everything and put it and implement it into the game. It was really awesome, really cool bosses, very fair game, but yet very difficult. And another thing I did with that game was I also didn't just play through it once. I actually played through it twice, beating it on expert mode and 100%ing it that way as well, which is another very rare thing I do. With all of these backlogs of games, I don't really go back and play games very often unless I really enjoy them. So for me to put another five to six, seven hours into Cuphead and go back and play that is pretty crazy. I can't wait till they come out with it for the Nintendo Switch. I do not have a physical copy right now because that's what I'm waiting for. And it's going to come with some type of DLC, which I'm really excited for. But guys, Cuphead had power-ups, just like Contra had a homing gun had a spread-like type gun, had a pea shooter, had cool characters, awesome graphics, awesome bosses, cool story, just a lot of good stuff when it comes to Cuphead. 10 out of 10, gotta be on one of the top games I have ever played in my life. I, I'm sure it would make that list, and I have played a lot of games. So Cuphead was the biggest game that moved me out of this decade, and thank you Gaming Off The Grid for letting me be in the collab. Take care guys. For me, the video game over the past decade that kind of moved me the most or floored me the most or even is really my favorite game of the last decade has to be Mario Odyssey. That game is really everything I've wanted in a Mario game for a long time, kind of where I wanted Mario to return to in a way. Yeah, I love the side-scrolling platforming Mario games, but I feel like games like Mario 64 and Mario Galaxy are kind of the games where I get this bigger sense of Mario and who he really is and even like a little bit of his personality. Mario 64 was a big game for me in my childhood. There's a lot of past that goes into it, some deeper meaning than just playing video games. And Super Mario Odyssey kind of did those same things for me over again. And I got to experience it with my kids, which was really cool because this felt like a new Mario adventure. It felt like we were getting something completely different. You know, a lot of Mario games are guilty of kind of rehashing the same thing and the same traits and nothing really feels super new. It's still super fun. Super Mario Odyssey felt like the biggest breath of fresh air. I remember watching the trailers for it. And when I realized that Mario could become anything in the entire game. It was like, there is no limits on what this game is. This isn't a anything. It's not a platformer. You don't play as this character or this character. Yes, you're playing as Super Mario, technically Cappy as well, but are you? You're kind of playing as every environment possible. There is no standard of way of playing to where when you pass the controller to someone go, you know, this does this and this does this and this does that. This button does this and that. No, everything was different and unique, and to kind of let my kids experience that with me, I got a lot of those same feelings and same vibes that I got as a kid playing Mario 64 with my brothers, and you know, even my parents kind of watching out of the side, even though they weren't into video games. But just kind of like this big new adventure, and I felt like Mario Odyssey completely did that. Seeing my kids' joy while playing it together is just such an amazing thing as a dad to witness. You know, I started to witness that on the Wii U with them, and now as they're a little bit older and kind of understand video games and how to play a little better, really see them get through these challenges and fight to win the video game and just understand some of the stories being told and with Cappy and a little bit more emotion. And Super Mario Odyssey, uh, to me, yes, uh, floored me the most, moved the most, one of my favorites of the decade, but I may even go as far as saying it is one of my favorite games ever made. Probably pretty, pretty easily lands in my top three. Thanks. Hey, it's your girl JLove81. Thank you Gaming Off The Grid for allowing me to be part of this video. So, the game that moved me the most this decade is Heavy Rain on the PS3. This game was developed by Quantic Dream in 2010, it was released on the PS3. It's the first time I played anything like it. The first time in history I played a game from beginning to end, straight on through. It took me seven, eight hours to beat. The story is phenomenal. The vo voice acting was incredible. It's pretty much a interactive action adventure game. You play the four characters and each character can die, including the main character, depending on your decisions. So this game is based on decisions. There's button props that allow you to interact 
interact with your environment. There's also quick time events where you have to like button mash when it tells you whatever it tells you on the screen, you have to press. It is fantastic. So you're pretty much looking for the origami killer and the main character's son is kidnapped by the origami killer and they use rainfall, excessive rainfall to drown their victim. So you have a certain amount of time to find your son. And like I said, it is fantastic. So it also, whatever decisions you make, determines the ending of the game so there's different alternate endings you could play it different ways just to see the different endings fantastic it was remastered on the ps4 so there's the quantic dream collection which is what i have so i highly recommend checking this game out i'm telling you it was just awesome for its time and it looked beautiful it was a beautiful game the story is really touching so i definitely have to say this game moved me the most this decade. All right, guys, sorry to break the flow, but I just gotta say something. Nice hat, J-Love. Hashtag, hat soulmates. Man, game of the decade. Talk about a tough question. There are so many good games that came out this last decade. I was just thinking about all the way back to 2010, I had to think back. It was the year I graduated college, so a lot of good games. Um, and it definitely took me a while to figure it out. Um, there was a few that I just could not choose between. But in the end, I had to go with the game it was part of my favorite franchise of all time. One that completely surprised me. Um, I did not expect to be so good just because it was going to be different from the rest of the franchise. And that is God of War on the PS4. So like I mentioned, huge God of War fan. One of my favorite franchises. I loved the hack and slash. I loved the revenge. I loved the anger of Kratos, how he just destroyed his enemies. And it was just such a fun game, especially since I like Greek mythology. So that even made it better. And so when I heard this game was coming out, I was excited because it's God of War, but I knew it was gonna be different. It's not gonna be as hack and slash. It's not gonna be as brutal as Kratos has been in the past. You know, it's gonna be a little more story driven, a little bit slower paced. And it's gonna be Norse mythology instead of Greek mythology. And so I was very nervous but this game proved me wrong and it turned out to be fantastic i love how they took kratos who was just full of anger full of rage and turned him a little more sympathetic now he's a father and you can see he it's it's rough at times with his son but you can see there those moments where he actually really cares for him and he wants to do the right thing he doesn't want his son to grow up like he did when he was in in Greece and going after the gods. So that was really cool to see that dynamic and as it changed throughout the game. It's just a beautiful game, it's gorgeous, great environments. I really enjoyed the Norse mythology, learning more about that. And I just thought they did an excellent job. And I really look forward to see what else they do with this series after this. And little spoilers here, so if you don't want the game ruined for you, skip past this part. Are you ready? My favorite part is when Kratos got the Blades of Chaos. So awesome. Uh, I mean, using the axe was cool, but dude, Kratos deserves to have his Blades of Chaos. And sure enough, as soon as he was going back home to get something, I'm like, dude, is it the Blades of Chaos? And then he uncovers them. I'm like, this is awesome. And you get to use them. So cool. Really cool touch. I really like how they kept looking back and and kind of mentioning the old games, which was a really cool thing. So definitely God of War, my game of the decade, a fantastic game. And if you have not played it, I highly suggest you do. I think it's worth getting a PS4 just for that game. So thanks Gaming Out The Grid for uh, having me on. Until next time guys, this is Captain Algebra, signing off. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here talking about the game that moved me the most in the past 10 years, the game that moved me the most in the past decade. My friend, the first game that came to mind that I got to talk about it is Friday the 13th. Now this game, to me, had just about everything going against it for me. I'm not a huge fan of the franchise, I'll be honest with you. I'm not a huge fan of horror games. I'm not a huge fan of online games. However, this game did it right, even though it was a little buggy, especially when it first came out. <laughs> <laughs> but so much fun to be had uh, just staying up late nights until the sun came up. I haven't been doing that since I was like 12. Um, but just playing this game with my online friends. I have friends today that I met playing this game online. And uh, we did this, um, I was playing this on the PlayStation 4 when it first came out. And like most games, you play them for a while, you enjoy them, you're just having a lot of fun with them, and then other games come in and it kind of gets put aside for a little while. Well, then they release it for the Nintendo Switch. It comes right back. And uh, just like muscle memory, man, I'm just, I'm all over the place playing with new players now. So we're schooling them. I'm playing it with my new online friends too. So we're all getting involved. And um, I loved that feeling of belonging. Uh, it was such a great feeling. And maybe that's why a lot of people play games online is because, you know, they don't get out of the house much or whatever the case may be. And it was just nice to be able to chat with online. All these friends that I talk to, I type you know, messages and back and forth, but we don't actually hear each other's voices outside of watching each other's videos. 
and this game kind of brought that back for me, and, um, and I can't thank them enough for it. So, my favorite game, uh, the game that moved me the most in the past 10 years, I gotta go with Friday the 13th, my friend. The games move us in many ways, the visuals, the gameplay, the story, the music, and this one had it all. The time and the setting of the Old West is so close yet so far away of an era that it's like a dream. It's a simpler but deadly time to live. A time of logic and reason, but not without flights of fantasy, and this series embraces all that wonder with this game fine-tuning every role and gameplay and element. Rockstar excels at majestic open worlds ripe for exploring. Happening upon a what-the-moment never loses its charm. Yeah, there was definitely a lot more of those moments in this game than in the last game, and it actually made you want to go out and explore things because you never knew what you were going to come across. One of the other things that I absolutely loved about this game was that there were so many different terrains to look at. You didn't have just one color palette. For me, the main reason that I wanted to choose this game was Arthur Morgan. He is one character that I feel like grew more than any character I've played in a really, really long time. I didn't care about him at the beginning. I just wanted John Marston. But then by the end of the game, all I wanted was more Morgan. And I want pretty much every video game to have Morgan in it. And I actually had withdrawals from this game. Hashtag more Morgan. <laughs> so is it safe to say that this game moved both of us? Sure. Sure. Hi, my name is Adam Korlick, and I have a YouTube channel of the same name. First, I'd like to thank Gaming Off The Grid for having me involved with this. Uh, they specifically asked if I could talk about the game that was the most significant to me within the decade that has just ended, or is about to end, depending on when you've seen this. And for me, the answer is very simple, Shenmue 3. If you know anything about me, you already know that. But basically, long story short, I'd been waiting for Shenmue 3 since 2001, when Shenmue 2 dropped in. It was this thing that we were never going to see, and if you watch my channel all the way back when I started, which actually was 10 years ago, I've been hammering on the idea of Shenmue 3 for Forever. Pushing for it, lobbying for it, hoping it would happen, doing everything I can to make it exist. And it came into existence through many community efforts, and it's a wonderful thing to see, but by far, the most significant game of the decade to me is Shenmue 3 because it shouldn't exist, but it does. And I love that because it was everything I ever wanted. Well, so Robert, thanks for having me on here on Gaming Off The Grid. Gary here with Rock Solid Productions. And the game that moved me the most in the last 10 years is the NES Pursuit. Now, nah, nobody wants that trash. The game that moved me the most and for probably a very unique reason, is Holy Diver. And I know I'm cheating a little bit. It was released in Japan, but it was released for the first time here in the US. And the reason this game moved me the most, I'm actually recognized in the manual on this thing, alongside some other great YouTubers. It was the first time that I was really recognized and acknowledged for what I was doing here on the channel. And the folks at Retrobit, they didn't have to do it. I was humbled and I greatly appreciate what they do. It's such a cool honor to be a part of the manual for a Nintendo video game game. That's why this was the game that moved me the most the last 10 years. What's the one game that moved me the most out of the last decade? Let's take a look. The story is told through the eyes of Talion, a former ranger of Gondor who was ritually executed along with his family by the Black Hand of Sauron. Shadow of Mordor is rich with Middle-earth lore, though none of it's really canon, it's not going to hinder any enjoyment from a hardcore loader fan. The game's combat system does an amazing job of giving you the feeling of being able to take down Mordor single-handedly, but also reminding you that death lurks around every corner. One of the coolest things about this game is the hierarchy within the Uruk AI. So if you're slain by a captain squad or even a grunt Uruk, they'll remember you, level up, and they'll be harder to kill next time you see them. Between the stunning visuals of the land of Mordor, the dark and gory combat system, and the empathy that you feel for Talion and his family and his motivation really moved me and is one of the best games I've played in the last decade. Anyway, you guys, that's going to do it for me. Thank you guys for having me on your collab. Back to you, Wes and Rob. Man, this has been awesome. Yeah. So many great picks and diverse picks. It's so cool. And like initially when some people said their games, I was like, Whoa, that's your game of the decade? That's the game that moved you? But then the story behind it, I'm like, oh, it yeah. makes sense. And it's just like awesome seeing people's perspectives, you know? It is, you know, in video games, they're an art form and they are supposed to move us. We're supposed to connect with them. And that's part of what makes it so fun and to hear other people's journey. 
it's just amazing. Um, for all the content creators that helped out with this collaboration, we just want to say thank, thank you. Thank you so much. So many great friends and great memories have been created with you guys over the what year and a half that we've had this YouTube channel. We will put links in the description below to each and every one of their channels. And if you haven't checked them out, do yourself a favor. Great people, great content, and uh, you're definitely going to enjoy the work that they do. And without further ado, I think it's time we reveal our game of the decade. Our game of the decade is Valve's modern puzzle classic. Well, I guess it's not modern because it came out in 2011, but that is Portal 2. We have it on Xbox 360, but I believe it's available for the PS3 as well. This game is so unique and it's such a great co-op experience. It is, and I really thought it was gonna be tough for us to agree yeah. on a game that moved us the most in the decade, but this is a game that is new to my life since we've had the channel. And the reason I like it so much is I have never played another game like it. I've been playing video games since 1989, and I have never played a game like Portal 2. It is amazing. The game does have a single player mode, but where it really thrives is couch co-op. I've never played a game that takes so much telekinetic collaboration with the person you're playing it with. You can't just play this game co-op with just anybody. No, you can't, and I've tried, let me tell you, and we did not finish the game. Like, if you play it with people that you don't really have that chemistry, that connection with, you'll get frustrated, you'll get upset, you'll wanna shut the game off because you literally have to work together so well, and if you don't, you're not gonna be able to complete it. And this game is so frustrating, but at the same time, it's so simple because once you figure out the puzzle, you're like, dude, why didn't I figure yeah. that out an hour ago? Yeah, it's like it, just breathe and settle down because nine times out of ten, the solution is right under your nose. You're just overlooking it. It's one of my favorite co-op games of all time. And this game is so awesome. Yeah, it definitely stands out. It's the cream of the crop, I feel like, for couch co-op games in the last decade. And it's a game that I truly feel I've never played a game like it and I will probably never play another game like it again. Unless Valve Portal 3. You know how Valve is. They don't like making three games in any series. Yeah, I get it. But anyway, I think it's time for a little bit of beer. Yep, I think it's time. It's beer 30. And what better way to come full circle than with Miss Kinzilla herself, the YouTube sensation that we stole the beer right, review idea from. Kinzie, thank you so much for joining us. Of yes, course, cheers. cheers. <laughs> so, uh, tracking this beer down, you were lucky to be able to grab some? Yeah, actually, when you guys asked me, like, a lot of times beer is so regional that yeah, I was yeah. like, well, I don't know, I'll try. I went to, like, a bigger bottle shop because I knew my little ones probably wouldn't have it, but they were just like, oh, yeah, that beer? It's right over there. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it worked out perfect. I think since we kind of uh, were inspired by you for the beer review thing, I think it's only fair you kind of lead the way with this one. We will follow your lead right. and let's uh, enjoy this 2019 Bourbon County yeah. Stout. All right. So as I said, Bourbon County Stout by Goose Island. This is a stout aged in bourbon barrels, meaning it's probably going to smell delicious. Right, guys? It, it smells so oh, good. God. It's very rich. It's like hella rich. I yeah. can smell it from like here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's epic. The only Goose Island beer that I can get out here is typically their IPA. It's on tap in a couple places, so I haven't really ventured into Goose Island too much. So, ventured into Goose Island. It's like an adventure. <laughs> yeah, you took a little boat, you know, over to Goose, <laughs> Island, to Goose Island, you know, Island. hung out for a few days. It's yeah. just an island full of beer, apparently. Beer and geese. I do like that on the back it says, enjoy in a snifter, and we all have, like, our proper glassware. Yes, we yeah. do. <laughs> there we go. And is Goose Island about you guys? Yeah, I think it's from Chicago. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yep. And then... They kind of, you know, sold out. We were talking a little bit before we let the cameras roll for this review that they uh, sold to the big, you know, brewer. So yep. it is nice they're still doing some small batch stuff like this. Oh, totally. Their IPAs and stuff have gotten a lot of, they've been, they've been commercialized. Oh, 100%. They made a, they're, they're made for the masses. And then this, this is just for the beer snob. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and this is, comes in at a whopping 14.7% alcohol by volume, which I always think is tricky because sometimes it takes away from the flavor of the beer and then you just taste alcohol. Without further ado, we should probably try it, right? <laughs> All right, let's do <laughs> it. Cheers. Cheers. Oh boy. <laughs> this is like... That is, uh... Oh, wow. damn. That's good. It's a tasty treat. It, yes. It's bourbony and it's rich and it's malty and the like high percentage does not take away from the actual flavor you get a little bit of burn on the finish but for the most part it's really smooth yeah, it's really smooth and it, it, this is a, a dessert this is a treat yeah. it beer. is it's chewy do you ever say that a beer is chewy is that something you ever say like it lingers for a long time you can chew on it for a while now i will <laughs> but i totally get it because i can 100 percent still taste it 
Yeah. yeah. It's, it lingers. Yeah. I don't even know if it's a real thing, but I've said it before, and people are like, what's that mean? It's like, oh, I don't know. I just can, like, still taste it for, like, minutes, yeah. you know? Yeah, because it makes it sound kind of gross. You're like, ooh. It but does. then when you actually it think does. about <laughs> it, you're like, oh, no, I yeah. get it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, man, this beer is so chewy. Yeah, yeah, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I totally Wowzers. see it. And yeah, the bourbon is on the finish and it lingers and oh my God. And it's like, we got this 2019, like end of the decade episode going on. This is the 2019 last Goose Island bourbon county of the decade. Yes. It's like, it's meant to be. It is. It's perfect. <laughs> and it's so good. It's a top shelfer, I think. It is. Oh. And I look forward to it every year because it's one of those, they release it and it's a little bit different every year. And mm -hmm. it's just like, man, when I get to Goose Island bourbon county, I know it's almost the end of the year. It's almost the end of the decade. Ah. It's time to celebrate and with some great Now beer. that I know that I can get it, it'll be a yearly thing for me too. All right, I think we put a lid with this review on the decade. An awesome decade it was. An awesome beer this was. Awesome beer. Any gaming thoughts you have before we part ways? Oh man, I just am so excited about what 2020 holds already. And like, if oh, this yeah, last same. decade is indicative of anything, the next one is just going to be even better. But I'm a little scared <laughs> because of digital media, but yeah. I'm excited. I think if physical is going to hang out for a while, so I think we're good for a, we're good for a little bit. You think we'll have it till 2030? You know, I yes. Okay, but okay, you heard not, it here first. Yeah. <laughs> but just not as much as we have now. Yes, not as okay. prevalent. Yeah. And the beer will be good, and the fellowship will be great. And that's what this episode was all about. We brought together some of the our favorite and most credible content creators that we have met since we've been on this platform. Thanks to everyone who was involved, and cheers to 2020. Cheers. We'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Off The Grid. Hey guys, Gaming Off The Grid here. The decade is almost... What? The decade is almost... A decade. Extinct. Yeah. Hey guys, Scheming Off The Grid here. The decade is coming to a close and what a... In the last decade. And can you believe it's already almost 2020? That's insane, because I've had 2020 vision my entire life. <laughs> Whoa, ooh. <laughs> is the NES cartridge a parent? The sexy beard wearing? The seer... Serial stealing, wheeling, dealing. Biggest smile on the tube, son of a gun. They call him John Ricks. Woo! Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Some of the best folks we have met since we've been doing YouTube are going to be a part of this video and tell you. I got to go get a drink of water. <laughs>